title for today is The Resurrected Christ. Many times, it is our worry that makes us choose the wrong decision. It is our anxiety that deceives us to use our own strengths. When we are afraid, fear directs us towards the different directions. Um, we don't want to worry, but there is worries. We don't want to have anxieties, but there is. No matter how, how free you want to be free from all this fear, but there is still fear that threatens your life. We worry, we have anxieties, and we fear a lot. And when, whenever we have it, that makes us going to direct towards wrong directions. Not only that, it deceives us to choose make it deceives us to make wrong decision too. And ultimately it will bring Destructions in your life. So yesterday, um, <clears throat> I went to play tennis at 7.40 a.m. So whenever I go to the courts on Saturday, the, there are four courts that we can use. But most likely on Saturday, the courts are occupied. So although my plan is that I supposed to meet my partner at 7.40, I was worried whether we're, gonna, we're not going to have any courts to play. So I was preparing to go to tennis play, uh, to the court, and right after I had my tennis bag on my back, I started to feel this aching feeling in my stomach, which means my body was telling me, Pastor, um, you got to take number two right now. But I worried I won't have any tennis courts. I was fear. There will be no courts. I was anxious. So instead of me taking number two, I went to tennis court even 10 minutes before, uh, before uh, the appointment time. And I went there. Guess whether we played tennis or not? We played. But you know when we got the court? We got the courts at 8. Great. I got to play tennis. From 8 to 9.30, I played tennis. And on the way back home, you know, like your stomach's already hurt, and you had extreme, extreme like exercise on your body. And now it's hurting me too much that I can't hold it anymore. But I succeeded to hold it up until I got home. But when you got home, when you know there is my, there is restroom right there, there's toilet, that's when it's about to burst, right? And I ran into my room, I ran into the restroom, I was ready, right? It was already on the half, it was already um, <laughs> starting to come out, right? <laughs> starting to, but I'm ready to take off my pants. So I'm like, this, and my pants was so tight. I couldn't even put my fingers in between my pants and my, my waist. So it took time to take off my pants, and I had two out of five of my uh, poop on my underwear. <laughs> and, I, and, and, yeah, and I'm like, oh, it's time for me to buy my diaper, not only for my kids, but I need my diaper too. <laughs> and I, I, I sat on a toilet looking at my poop on my underwear. I'm like, I felt so sad. I felt so loser. You know, this must be a life that lie and describe a low life. You know, my life, I was so, I was like, okay, how old am I? 
How old am I? This is what my kids do. But good thing is I already married to my wife. So you don't do this before you get married. They might run away from you, right? So I said, I'm like, okay, why am I pooping on my underwear right now? Why? Because I worried that I might not, I might not have tennis court. I worried my tennis partner will be disappointed at me if I were too late to the, to the meeting. So I try to fix myself to everything else when I was losing myself. This is how people are living. They want to adjust themselves to society, to success, to education, to money, to people, your friends. But that's how we damage our life ourselves. And I got the court at 8. You know what that means? I could have just taken number 2 at home. And if I, I was at the court at 7.55, I would get the court at 8. No matter what, I would get the court at 8. But I was filled with worries. I was filled with anxieties. I, was, I, was, I already thought maybe my partner is going to be disappointed at me. I should keep my time. Wrong direction, wrong decision brings me destructions. And this is how Satan deceives you. There was a time this one, um, one girl in, in my, um, in, at, a, at a church, not our church, she asked me, Pastor, um, my boyfriend lives, af lives abroad. He lives in South Africa, and he wants me to fly over to South America to, uh, to keep a relationship, and I love to go. But the thing is, Pastor, my parents doesn't want me to go. They just want me to stay here. Why are they so opposing me when I simply want a date? And I told her, just tell your boyfriend to come to America then. Why do you have to go to South Africa? Why do you have to be there when your boyfriend can, over, can, come to South, uh, can come to United States? And she's like, oh, I never thought about it. But she's like, still, I want to just go. I just want to go. I want to be with my boyfriend. Just three, four months later, I asked her, I see you here in the United States. What's happening? We broke up. She fought against her parents for what's been break, what, will be break, what will be broken in three months. That's how people are living. We don't see what's, in, what's happening in the future, but we worry so much. And we thought we will be lost when we can fulfill what, my, what I desire. And this is how Satan deceives. What are you going to say? Did I poop on my underwear? Is it my partner's fault that he made that we got to play tennis at 740? Is that anyone who was already at the course, is that their fault that they played already? Whose fault is that? No one's fault. But we blame on others many, many times. Because of you, because of my parents, because of situation. And we bear this victim mentality. You know, we're living in the age where we see so many um, race uh, hate crimes against each other. This is how we are living. You know, maybe somebody, maybe a oh, we have a Caucasian woman today. <laughs> She's looking at me. She just looks at me. She's listening to the message, right? But let's say I am overwhelmed by Asian hatred, a hatred crime. I can think maybe she's here to destroy Asian. Right? And she's just there to listen to the message. I've never had any conversation with her, but I can simply think maybe she's looking and she's looking down on me right now. Does she think that way? She doesn't. But because I'm already occupied with wrong ideology and worries and wrong anxieties, I'm making my own decision that's wrong. She's looking down on me. Maybe she's making fun of my pronunciation. Maybe she's doing this, she's doing that. And she never did it. And after the worship, I can just go home, tell my wife, I was so irritated because there was one Caucasian woman looking down on me. 
Did she look down on me? Never. But she only hears story from me, right? So she could say, that's so bad. That's the problem of this age. That's the problem of the United States. That's the problem of Caucasian. That's the problem of any other colors. She could resonate with me when all my words are literally nothing. I'm deceiving myself. She never looked at me that way. She never judged me. But I think that way. So my question is, who's giving you that thought? Who's giving you that wrong concept? Who's giving you, who's imprinting, engraving wrong ideology in your heart? Why can we simply stop my worry? Why can we simply stop my anxiety? Because there's a work of Satan. He brings you worries. He brings you anxieties. He brings you fear. And that makes you come to have the wrong decision and wrong directions. And saying to him to deceive you this way, it's all your fault that you destroy your own life. That's how Satan is deceiving. You know, my height is 5.58. I think I'm 5.8. I am. I am 5.8. And my parents were always praying, Father God, please make my son at least six foot. And I'm still 5'8". Later, when I heard that my parents were praying for me for my height, I started to think, oh, it's because I didn't sleep early enough. That's why my height is like this. It's because I play game all the time. That's why my height is this. I was always blaming on myself that I'm not growing tall enough. When all my cousins and all my parents and my dad's brothers, my, si my mom's siblings are all short. So biologically, I'll, I'm not going to be that tall. But I was always blaming on myself. All right, let me ask you, who's deceiving you? Who's destroying you? Today, I really want you to know your enemy. It's not even your mom. It's not even your dad. It is Satan bring you wrong thoughts and make you have a wrong decision. And he will ultimately come to go against and destroy you. That's how Satan's working. This week, one of the remnant in our house, he lost his phone. <laughs> when he lost his phone, he, <laughs> he accused my son. Because there was a reason for that, though. There is a reason. Because he found his phone case in my son's toy room. And his phone wasn't there. What if my phone is broken? You can't worry. What if my phone is uh, scratched? What if my phone is literally gone? And the bad thing is this. That kid is pastor's son. If he were to nobody, he can just come against Beat him up and you got to pay money for my new phone. Or if he's scratched, he can just beat him up and give me money. But it's pastor's son. He's favorite pastor in the world. And he can't even do that. So he's just getting, getting mad. At the same time, my wife was getting mad. Why are you guys pointing at my son when he didn't really do it? And later on, we found out that case was not even his case. It was my wife's case. The case were identical, so he thought it was his case. Later, we found the phone. My, wo my, was, my wife was like, why are you guys doing this to my son? So does she have to bear this grudge against all our kids at our house? That is how... Satan is deceiving. Why can't they point at my son? What, what's, what's the problem with that? And my son needs to be grown up, right? He needs to learn some lesson. Don't take anyone's phone because you simply want it. And for my wife, it's a lesson for him, lesson for her too. 
Your son could be accused for anything. So why do you need to be mad? You need to hold on to Christ. Many times, we go against a person against a person, or ethnicity to against ethnicities, culture against a culture, and your ideology against ideology, when Satan is destroying all. May you look at your enemy and really look at how he's deceiving. Who is resurrected today? It's Jesus. Can we look at Matthew chapter 28, 18? Jesus came to say to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. It's Jesus who has authority of heaven and on earth is resurrected. Jesus, who's not under the control of Satan, who's not under the influence of death, who's not under any authority, now he's been raised from death. By his resurrection, our death is gone. Satan is destroyed. Jesus is resurrected. There's no other hero that has, a, that, that has been resurrected but Jesus alone. Jesus, who has authority on heaven and on earth, is resurrected. It's Jesus. Can we look at Philippians chapter 2, 9 and 10? Therefore, Jesus, God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Jesus, whose name is above every other name, he's resurrected. And he says, this, oh, on, uh, uh, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. This Jesus who is above all, is resurrected. And this is what I want to really tell you today. Jesus, whom we believe, is resurrected. Who else has been resurrected? There could be greater people, great people. There could be smart people. There could be rich people. There could be people who have, who, who's with good appearance. But what they boast about is their deaths. Where are they right now? They're dead. They're buried. But where is my Jesus? He's living. He's active. He's in us. He's with us. He's working in us. He's guiding us. Where is my Jesus? With all authority in heaven and on earth. The name above every other name. He's with us. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 17, it says, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. If he's not been raised. But now he's raised, he's with us. Why? Why is he resurrected? We're going to look at Hebrew chapter 2. Verse 14 to 18. Let's read verse 14 first. Since therefore the children, children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same thing, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death. His name is the devil. By the death of Jesus, he brings the death to the one who has power over death. He proves us Jesus is a Christ. He's a true king. By his death, the Satan is dead. Today, the Satan that destroys you, the Satan that deceived you, I believe, when we name, raise the name of Christ, he's going to be destroyed. 
He'll be running away. He's the one who should be scared of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, by his death, he brings destruction to the devil. Let's read verse 15. Not only that, by his death, he delivered all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. We were delivered from lifelong slavery. That's been done by the fear of death. That we confess Jesus Christ is a true priest, prophet. And he says, in any situation, in any circumstance, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Where are you enslaved to? Are you enslaved to game, addictions, worries? Are you enslaved to your anxieties? Are you enslaved to your thoughts? By his death, he delivered you. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes a father except through me. He has delivered you. Let's read verse 8, 17. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. In other words, he brings reconciliations. He brings forgiveness to us. He becomes a ransom for us. He proves He's a true priest. That he says there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life has set you free from sin and death. Who's there to judge you when Christ has set us free? Why is he resurrected? He's resurrected to destroy the work of the devil. He's resurrected to deliver you from lifelong slavery. He's resurrected to forgive all your sin. This is why we confess Jesus is a Christ, the answer to all. Christ alone is the answer to all. And today I want to make sure the resurrected Christ the resurrected Christ is my Christ. Do you guys believe in this? Is this the Christ only in my brain? Is this the Christ only written in this book? Is this the Christ that somebody else is talking about? Or is this my Christ? Is my Christ resurrected? Amen? Is my Christ with me? Is my Christ living in me? Is my Christ the one over power of Satan? Is my Christ the one deliver us from slavery? Is my Christ the one set us free all set us free from sin and death? Is he my Christ? He is my Christ. Are you facing any conflicts right now? Are you about to have a loss? Or are you in a situation that is unfair? What should we have to do when we face conflicts and loss and unfair in our reality? We must confess, my Christ is a resurrected Christ. He's the answer to all. What conflicts are you bound in? What are you about to lose? And what's so unfair in your life when Christ is with you? 
they are all revealed to you for you to, for God to re redirect your life towards Christ alone. The one who's resurrected in your life will bring the death to all the conflict. The one who resurrected and living in you will bring the death to all the loss. The one who's with you, he's the one bring the fairness in your life. What is the answer to our lives? Christ alone is the answer to our life. There's nothing else given to us, nothing else we must hold on to, but Christ alone given to us. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 to 58. And let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 55 to 57 first. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Let's read 56. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. 57. But thanks to be God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. They bring the law, they bring the sin, and through the law and sin, they're threatening you, make you worry, but we are thankful to God, for Christ has given us the victory. He has triumphed. Where are they? They're all dead when Christ is living. Bring anyone who's great enough, you will soon see they are buried when my Christ is resurrected. Where is the death? Where is the fear? Where is worries? Christ is with us. So all the conclusion of your life, The conclusion of your life is only Christ. Through the problems, He's redirecting you towards Christ, even through answers. Answer is not the end of the answer. The end of, and the conclusion of the answer is we are found in Christ and we are discovered by Him that we are in Christ. That's the conclusion of all the answer. You may be rich, but if you're losing Christ, what's profitable to you? You are successful, but if you're losing Jesus, what is beneficial to you? You may lose all, but if you earn Christ, you have earned everything. The conclusion of our answer, the conclusion of any other problems, the conclusion of conflicts, the conclusion of your reality is Christ alone. And let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters and all the children of God, Paul blessed them, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Your life never can turn to vain. Your efforts, your work, your labor, your past, your present, your future, even my poop that I had on Saturday on my underwear, it's not in vain. Because now I'm witnessing of it. Nothing in your life will be wasted. It will be known and it's never turned to vain. So steadfast, immovable, 
in Christ alone. I know Satan will try to deceive you, confuse you, but we hold on to Christ. One last thing. These days, I got a phone call from scammers for like 10, 15 times. They're calling me from a random number and they're saying, this is Amazon uh, customer service. We found that you have a wrong transaction on your account, Amazon account, and somebody took $700 um, price from your account. And if you have any idea or if you have no idea about it, please press number one. I press number one. I always press number one. And they're like, hello, it's Amazon account, uh, customer service. Why did you call? I know they're faking, right? What should we confess? They call me because they want to hear Christ. Hi, scammers. You need Christ today. <laughs> Don't try to take money away from me. I know you're fake. Whenever Satan's deceiving, tell him, I know you're faking, man. I know you're faking. So um, I think it was 10 out of 10, they hang up first. <laughs> Let Satan hang off from your life. And what we proclaim is Christ, and he's the answer to all. And now that I want more scammers phone call, because that made me reach out to more scammers so that I can share Christ even more. Nothing is a problem because Christ is the answer to all. Let this resurrected Christ living and active throughout our week. And let him be praised, let him be confessed in our reality. Let's have a time of meditation. May we close our eyes and have a time to meditate on the meaning of the resurrection of the Christ and how it relates to our life. And if you're going through any conflicts or any worries, if you're in any problems, Father, let it be the chance where we would hold on to Christ again where we would proclaim Christ again. Anything that are fake, let it be gone when we confess Christ. Let's have time of meditate of Christ. Let's confess our faith. Jesus appear. Jesus appear with radiant glory in his life. He came to him who had persecuted Christ. He opened his dark eyes so he could see religion and the law. And the law, how he was set free, chosen to reach all the nations and to preach. He who be God's instrument to save the world, called to be a witness of only Jesus Christ. Walk the path of a true evangelist alive. So do not be afraid, the persecution will pass.